<laughs> Do not touch that dial. I have assumed complete control of your computer. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the show. All right, welcome back, folks. If you hear uh, noise in the background, well, we, we just got here, and I, it was cold in here, and I turned the heat, and it's, that's the heater running back in there. It's probably not even picking it up, but if you hear it, I know you headphone lovers, you hear everything. What are we doing today, you ask? This hummingbird guitar, okay? If you remember, we measured 18 thousandths around the nut accent. Remember that? You know, some guitars, the string tension, it just seems like there's more tension on the strings. This guitar is like that. Uh, I'm expecting company. I thought, I thought that was. Anyways, uh, this guitar seems like it's like that. Like, there's a lot of tension on the strings for some reason. It's tuned to A440, standard tuning. But I've been playing around with it a little bit, and it's hard to chord, man, up here at the nut. Now, I didn't play it much down here, because... Well, it's an old string. I haven't played it a lot, really. But what I have played it, it hurts my fingers. So I'm going to lower that nut action and I'll show you how you can make your guitar play a whole lot easier than it does if it's like this. So uh, come closer. Come closer! By the way, this video is brought to you by a product called Picker's Grip. You guys remember that? I doubt if you can see it under that light. If you drop your pick, this is a great product right here, man. The only trouble I have is getting a container open. I can't see without... I'll have to open the wrong end of it. I can't see without my glasses. Anyways, you just pull the lid open. Twist it. Kind of like pull the product out. That's what the product looks like. And then you take your pick and run your pick around it. Like so, if you can see that. You can do both sides of it. Just run right around the edge of the Picker's Grip product. And and I'm telling you, man, when you put that stuff on, you can't sling your pick or throw it down, and it will not turn. Check them out at pickersgrip.com, and uh, you'll be glad you did. I'm absolutely sure you Tell Billy you came from the house that never sleeps. How do you like them? drawers folks ain't that sexy <laughs> before we start I wanted to say I I found grooves in my nuts <laughs> by the string gauge size okay a lot of people just take any file and, and file them all six out with the same one well we don't work like that here I mean, when you get a house that never sleeps set up you're going to find out it's like no other <laughs> So, I have these files here. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see them on the camera. These are the three I need for this guitar, according to the gauge strings that's got on it. Okay, and I'm gonna, I can use one side of the file, like here, and then turn it over and use the other side of it here. Same thing with another file for the third string, and then turn it over like that for the next fourth one. And... These are all the files I'll need for, to do this job right here I'm going to do. I'm going to lower that down to 16 thousandths. And it won't buzz. I guarantee it. And I was going to say, if you don't, these files are very expensive, man. I mean, I don't know if Stu Max still even sells them. That's where I got them years ago. I'm sure they sell some form of file, but not those. Or well, maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> but if you don't have those, you can use something like these. I used to use these a long time ago before I got those. And you know, you, you kind of got to guess at the, the uh, string gauge, you know, try to get the slots the same size as the string that's going to go through it. I'm going to show you this. This is the stupidest thing. I never did figure it out. Look. That's supposed to snap. How do you snap it when the thing rolls right over top of it? I can feel it under there. Anyways, let's do it. All right. I'm going to check that again. I'm pretty sure it was uh, 18,000. I think that's what this guitar measured at. Well, I got 18. It's way more than that. I thought that's what that was. Well, 
Well, it's going to come way down from where it is right now. I've got 18 right here. Make, make sure 10 and, and an 8. Yeah. Wow, that's big time loose, man. The string will ring out with the feeler's gauge under there. So, I thought that was awful hard to play. I thought it was, man. We'll just start with that side. Now, see, this has got like two sides. This tells you the size up here. Uh, one side of it is a 54. That's the one we're going to start with. And the other side is a 42 for the next string. That 54 is this side. Now, I've got a bunch of videos talking about this, but I'm going to tell you again anyway. When you're doing this, you want to file toward the peg that, that that string goes to, okay? In this case, it's pretty much a straight line. But you also want to turn your file up like so, you know, up this way, at the same angle the headstock is, exactly. These files, man, I mean, they will eat a nut up fast. So, let's go a little bit at a time. We want to see that puppy at eight. See it still ring out under there. So we got a good ways to go with that. Quite a long ways yet. Let me get the right side of the file again. You probably can't see the angle that I'm that I got on the file. I'm angling it, you know, perfect perfectly uh, parallel to the way the headstock is angled back. I think we made some headway this time with this puppy. He can actually go some more, but we're getting there. I think I'm gonna have to knock the nut top of the nut off whenever I get finished here because the strings will be setting down in it so far. We really like to have our strings half of the diameter of the string sticking above the nut for best tone and volume. That might be a little bit short, but it'll be okay. That's probably closer to 16 right now. It's lifting the string. So let me get a one and a six. Where's the six at, man? Here it is. I mean a ten and a six, not a one and a six, idiot. Get the seven out of the way. Alright, finally. That's it. That's it. It's sixteen. Now listen. It still doesn't buzz. I want that 18 back up because I went farther and I meant to go there. But you get the idea. That's going to be way, 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 way easier to play. I thought, man, I could swear I measured that at 18 thousandths before when we checked the guitar out in another video. I don't know. Yeah, I work on so many guitars, it's just hard to keep track of all of them. But we know this one's. See the string will ring out with the, t with the tool under there. Now all I gotta do is use this same file. I'm gonna use the other end of it now. And I wanna aim at this peg. Get up here where I can see it. I know quite a bit's got to come off of it, so. And that is quite a bit, so let's check it. I just say you can really screw up with those files. Sounds like it to me. See, I went just a little bit farther than I should with that. I got the 18 back here again. I guarantee if I check it, it would be a 16. 
So we're just going to leave it there. That one's good. Oh, the ring's got tight. All of a sudden. Well, that first ring is less than... Yeah, that's what we're doing, man. Third string is probably 16. The second one is 18. And the first one's 18. I'm going to leave them like that. And there's no buzzing, you see. Well, I was figuring I'm going to have to do every one of those. This would slip as I'm following it. Yeah, i got to start down here and roll it over as I as I file it. You know what? I'm going to put that clamp on the other side. It's right in my way. Like I say, this is backwards the way I usually do this. I didn't used to even use the clamp. But the way I shake now, <laughs> I'll take any precautions I can to... Now, it's not that tight, but it's... See, if I come over there, if I come over, come up like that and come too far, there's no way I can go past the, the clamp. You see what I mean? So you're just going to try to keep it level. Well, <laughs> I know you can't already see, man. I'm guiding the file with my fingers, my thumb and index finger. And this uh, thing bites in pretty good. I'm just going to keep this rounded over here. Keep a good rounded edge on it. So you can see that file bites in pretty good. <sighs> needs to go some more though. And I wish you could see the third and fourth string grooves the way they are angled. You can tell, if I can zoom you in, I might be able to make you see it. That's why I was talking about pointing that file when you uh, are filing out the slots. Point your file toward the peg of the string you're working on you can really see that fourth and third string because they're angled at these uh, keys clear up on the end of the peg <laughs> headstock <laughs> oh wow man there's some funny stuff on YouTube <laughs> I'm just going to go at it like this it needs to go down quite a lot so That is quite a lot already. Pretty good bit. But I'm going to continue on here. I'm not going to bore you to death with this. But I am going to keep doing it. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. Let's do it. And I'll bring you back here in a little bit. After I've made some headway. And that's what it looks like completed. Now the string should, uh, about half the diameter of the string should stick up above the top of the nut. On the wound strings at least, it, not so much, you don't have to worry about the unwound ones so much. So that's the way I do it. <laughs> Alright, finally had the company I'm looking for. I wanted to show you this little tool here, I don't know if I did or not earlier in the video. I don't think I did, so i got to get these off though before I can show you the tool to you. Very handy, and I'll show you a way that you can do the same thing if you don't have the tool. This tool came from Stumac. Wow, look at this. And uh, what I'm talking about is this little device right here. It holds the strings out of the way while you work. It works good on the nut, works good if you got to do something back here. And right there is what it looks like. I don't know how much they cost or if Stumac even still sells them or not. But if you don't have that, and you got a pair of these, just needle nose, come up from the bottom like, like so, and there you go. If they have rubber on the handles, you know, that, that's even a plus. That helps hold them up like that. Anyways, I'm done with that. And uh, I did want to bring it back and show you show you that and mention it. Uh, yeah, see how that string sat on top of the, the nut? Way better, man. Way better. That's the way to get 
Tori nut should be cut. Now I'm not going to tune this up. I'm going to tell you why. Why I'm not going to right now. Ain't that sexy? What do you all think about that? Woo! Biggity bop! Alright, the reason I'm not going to tune it up is because the next video, I've been working on this saddle right here, and it's finished except fitting it into the slot. Uh, I'm going to polish it more after I get it fit in, and that's going to be the next video, hopefully, if, if that's the plan. Anyway, don't forget to check out Picker's Grip. Tell Billy you came there from the host that never sleeps, and uh, you got to try that product. I'm telling you, man, especially if you have trouble holding on to your pick. Because it definitely is it works. You yeah, it's hot in here now. When I got the file on that night, it got really warm. Anyways, tell Billy came from the house and try his product out, and I'm sure he'd appreciate that. I keep it around here close because I use it quite a lot anymore. <laughs> I don't use it as much since I started using the uh, oh blue chip picks. They get they stick to you. The more you sweat, it seems like the stickier they get to your fingers. I've never tried this picker's grip with the blue chip pick. My God, it, it, the thing would be bonded into your bones, I would say. <laughs> but that's a good product, and I do recommend it. And the next video, like I say, we will fit this in. It's already uh, intonated, um, you know, as much as I could, and left enough, you know, I got a general idea. I don't know how to explain this. Your first string on the guitar saddle usually is forward. And usually the second and third can go either way, forward or back from that. The, the, the third, fourth, and fifth usually are back. You want the brake angle to be near the back of the saddle. And then the sixth, it varies a little bit. Usually forward, but not always. And I've, got, I've done all of that already. But i got to fit it, and it's too wide. Now, that thing was a block, man. It took me forever to get that down, that little like that. Check this out. You can tell it's tusk. Hear that glassy sound? If I had a bone one here, I'd show you the difference. I'll do a video on that. Cheers. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Woo!